So in this video we are going to take a look at a very popular time series model called ARIMA which stands for Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average Model and we will do some plots like ACF and PSCF followed by a junk box test and we will also do residual plot followed by a plot for forecasts. So for developing this time series model we are going to make use of a package called forecast. Now to find the best uh, ARIMA model I am going to use a function which is auto.arima. So basically what it does is it will give us the best ARIMA model based on either AIC or BIC value. So we specify that our data is AP. Remember that this is log transformed and let's store this uh, time series model in model. Once the model is ready you can even run this MODL to see what kind of model we have. So it tells us that the series that was used or the data that was used is AP and it also specifies what kind of model this is. So it says 011 where this 011 stand for P, D and Q where first one P is the AR order and second one which is uh, D is the degree of differencing and the third one which is 1 it is indicated by Q so this is the MA order or moving average order and then you also see the coefficients and standard error and we also have some other values calculated for us like AIC, AICC and BIC which help us in choosing the best time series model. You can also look at the attributes of this model. So you can see there are uh, several attributes we can isolate like coefficients, sigma 2 and so on. So for example, let's do model dollar sign coefficient and it will give us the coefficient. So remember this is the same value that we have obtained earlier. it is always good to look at ACF and PACF plots for the time series data. So let's uh, do that using ACF. From model we can get the residuals. So residuals is the difference between fitted values and actual values. And let's also give a title. So this is basically going to be correlogram. So this is what we get. We have various lags on the x-axis and ACF values on the y-axis. You can also see there are these uh, two dotted lines which are significance bounds. Basically this graph shows us that the autocorrelations for in-sample forecast errors do not exceed these uh, significance bounds for lags 1, 2 till the end in fact. The first one is at 0. Let's also look at uh, partial ACF by using PACF and we can give a title as partial correlogram and in fact uh, in this case all of them are within the significance bounds. So for all X we have values within significance bounds between these dotted lines. Now if you look at the previous one just as an example. So there is one line here you can see it almost touches the lower significance bound. Most of the values are quite small but there could be few which may create a suspicion whether it is really significant or not. So to test that we can make use of junk box test where we use model and residuals and let's use lag of 20 so that's more than enough so this is up to 20 and for type we can specify junk box so it quickly runs this test here and gives us a summary it calculates uh, x squared values degrees of freedom but we are mostly interested in the p value and if P is less than let's say 0 0.05 
then only we can say that there is a statistical significance but uh, since this value is quite high so if we are considering 95% confidence level so this is quite high so obviously uh, we can conclude that there is little evidence of non zero autocorrelations in the in sample forecast errors at lags 1 to 20 so obviously this is just a random chance that this is so close to the line in reality there is little evidence of non zero autocorrelations we can also do residual plot just to confirm that uh, there is no problem with this model so we plot the residuals let's color this as red and let's give x label as error and let's give the title of this chart histogram of residuals we can also indicate that we don't want to plot frequency but the density so for that we can say frequency equals false so this will give us a histogram and note that we are looking for a histogram which is more or less normal in shape it should be like bell shaped curve uh, with the most of the values concentrated around zero so this is what we get you can see most of the values like highest density values are concentrated around zero and this looks like a reasonable normal distribution curve in fact we can add normal distribution curve using lines so you can see it uh, more or less approximate normal distribution and we don't see any problem with the model so now we can do the forecast so we'll forecast using our model that we created and the name we had given was model and let's try to do a forecasting for next 48 months let's store this simply in f now before i plot this uh, i want to make use of library ggplot2 we can say auto plot you can see this is part of ggplot2 library and we want to auto plot f so this is what we get we had data till here and 12 times 4 is 48 so you see the forecast for next 4 years and it also gives us two different uh, confidence intervals the dark one is 80% confidence interval and the light shaded part is 95% confidence interval so this is wider than 80% we can also do standard accuracy calculations very easily by saying accuracy of this forecasted model f so it calculates the standard uh, accuracy measures that are used in time series like me mean error rmse root mean square error MAE, MPE, MAPE, MASE, and ACF1. In the next video, we are going to take a look at time series clustering with R.